Okay, let's see what we've got in the room then. So, hands up if you have under up to 200 jumps. Cool, keep your hands up. Hands up if you've got up to 500 jumps. Keep your hands up if you've got two and five. Put your hands up if you've got up to 1,000 jumps. That means you've got to keep up two and five and your hands if you've got 1,000. Cool. Okay, all hands down. Hands up if you've got more than 1,000 jumps. Very good. Interesting. Okay, a long shot. Is there anybody in the room with more than 7,000 jumps? Shard <laughs> <laughs> and Milk, Shard and Milk, I can see you. So if you, if you pay attention to the next four minutes, don't worry, we'll get you on some good formation stuff next year. Great. <laughs> Not too shabby. Who in the room would like to do some skydiving like that? That's good, you're in the right room then. So, for me, I need to get this out up front with you. If you're on a 12-way, a 15-way, a 24-way, a 28-way, a 32-way, thank you, sweet, for that super edit, that is not big-way skydiving. Right? It is just skydiving. It's just skydiving, it's what we do. 
don't you love the fact that we in this room can say those words? We can say, oh, it's just skydiving. And for everybody else you know, your friends, your family, your colleagues, it's never just skydiving for them. They think you're already lunatic. Because you let go of an aeroplane at altitude. And that aeroplane is perfectly serviceable. So I'll contradict myself there. In our hearts, we work. In our hearts, we also know it's not really just skydiving. We know it's awesome, and that's why we do it. In 1974, a 24-way star was a world record. You know what? It was just skydiving. So... Who am I? I'm Jim Bradwell. I know this because someone has tattooed it on my jumpsuit. I am wearing my jumpsuit for a reason, and we'll come to that later. I didn't start skydiving until I was 39. I've got about 2,500 jumps. That's not bad in three years. <laughs> uh, I've got you. I've got you. <laughs> um, I have never been to the Nationals. I never jumped for one. I'm 42. I've never done the Nationals, I never jumped four-way, but I love the tunnel, I do love the tunnel. I still get confused between those letters and those numbers and those dive stuff, it just confuses me. But I am dyslexic, and that's my excuse, and I'm sticking to it. But you know what, in the tunnel, it's just flying, it's just flying. Are there any free flies in the room? <laughs> I think some of you are lying. What I'm going to say is, what I'm going to say is, I'm in awe of anybody who free flies, and I totally get how difficult and skill needed even to fly in small free fly groups and turn point. I tried it, I realised I wasn't very good at it, and I'm probably going to keep in one discipline and try and get at least half good at one thing before I moved on. So I'm a flat fly, I'm a belly flyer, I'm as happy chasing a tandem as I am in some of the bigger stuff that goes on around the world. Now, maybe when you get to 80, 100 way plus, that may be big way. Yeah? Yeah. But trust me, a 24 way is not big way. Um, so my objective in the next 30 minutes, to get you out in time for the, meet, meet the rush at the bar, is to try and talk to you a bit about the fun that can be had on FS organised groups and maybe show you some of the ways that you can improve the level of the groups that you're on. And you at the end will decide whether I've been successful in that. So we're going to skip through a bit about skills and knowledge, touch on safety briefly, a bit about terminology, some simple stuff. Um, in my mind, how I see event stepping stones or the hierarchy, um, and then maybe get around to, well, what are the things that you could do to improve your chances? Um, if you don't mind, we'll leave the questions to the end, and I'll see if I can answer them. I realised 20 minutes ago when I looked at this presentation, I probably needed a slide before this one. So the people I'm talking to in the room, it's a given, if you like, you have the basic skills to get out of an aeroplane, approach a formation, stop, dock, track off, all that stuff. So the next 20 minutes is about the, the level of detail above that. So it's a given, you can skydive, you've got your FS1, Cat 10 in my, my year, my year, etc. etc. So when I first turn up at any event, what's often in my mind is, where do I start it? Well, can I influence my exit, my exit position? If I'm on an otter and there's 22 people and 21 of them are better last divers than me, I don't want to, I don't want to be last diver. So by where you approach the dirt dive can influence, to a degree, that slot. But it's a given you still have to be good at all of the exit positions. You know, you can't be a one-trick pony. But there are times to learn those skills, and there are times to accept, you know what? They're the boys for me. When I think about exits, whatever exit theme, I always think the same things. I always think present, identify, intercept. Present, get yourself stable in the airflow. Identify, is it up there? Is it down there? I've worked out where it is. Right, I'm going to go and get it. Yeah? Almost on every dive, as I'm setting up in the door, that is what's going through my head. Because I know I need to perform. And I know those three words will help me perform. You need to approach formation. You need to do it quickly and efficiently and safely. You need to match the fall rate. 
Uh, you need to fly your slot, not where the grips are, and you need to dock in the right way when it's the right time to do it. And again, I would emphasise, for me, one point isn't enough. Now, that sounds like it should be the title of a James Bond movie, but it's serious. Formation skydiving isn't about getting into formation, grabbing on, going, phew, yeah? For the odd record, maybe. It's about turning points. It's about going to the next point. It's about flying your body in the sky. And you can't fly the second point until we've all got to the first. Who can finish that famous phrase? Look to the centre or... Thank you, Brian. Bad things happen. Any of you have been to Paris, it's a P3ism, and it's very true. Once you have docked on the formation, your job is to look to the centre, look to the base, look to the organiser, look for the keys. You might see a wave coming through. You might see the formation starting to rotate. All the things that you can do as part of that skydive and that formation, you can minimise and you can do something about it. Looking down at the person down there who's 20 feet below the formation, you cannot help them skydive any better. The only thing you can do is have the per most perfect formation for when they pop up, they can come straight into their slot. So look to the centre. I knew there's something I'd missed earlier. Um, for me, as I've sort of said, I didn't, I didn't finish that, that part. Um, you don't need to be a four-way ninja to get on better quality organised skydive. As I've said at the beginning, I've never jumped four-way and I've never been to the Nationals. But one thing I think four-way jumpers are better at, if I'm honest, is anticipation. They tend to look to the centre, they tend to see the keys coming and they tend to be on it. Yeah. Non-four-way jumpers tend to be, there tends to be a lag. So that's a skill, if you're not a four-way jumper, you need to develop, and you need to tune, and you need to get good at. Um, typically a four-way jumper, they see the key, they anticipate, yeah, there's the key. I think that base is going to slow up a bit. They grab a bit of air, and they take the grips. The non-four-way jumper, or if you aren't clued into anticipation, oh, there's the key. Oh, shit, it's gone up a bit. Yeah? So that anticipation is, is critical. Uh, and it makes a difference between maybe you getting on this load and then the next load. Um, anticipate uh, movement into the slot, where the grip's going to be, etc., etc. And you, I'm sure you've heard the expression, wide eyes. And the way I can sum that up is, always be aware the person's going to hurt you. And if they're in that left field, make sure while you're looking to the centre, you can still see what's happening over there. You know, has it funneled, has it gone down, is it going up, all that sort of stuff. Break off and tracking are a fundamental survival skill if you want to get onto bigger stuff. They are fundamental. Um, anticipating the break off, for example. Anticipation again. Tracking. Often said, track like your life depends on it. Because it does. If you cannot track effectively and efficiently, well, distance, quickly, you are limiting the ability of yourself to get on bigger and better skydives. I will show you some uh, an edit in a bit where the tracking group, there are 15 people in the tracking group. 15 people in the tracking group. You need to learn that skill, practice it, be good at it, and then, you, oh yeah, they're, yeah, they're good. Yeah, they're good. We, we, we can rely on that. We know they've got that. Um, open altitudes. And I always say when you're tracking, always know the two people at the minimum either side of you. Because they're the people that are going to hurt you. Yeah? What four-way jumpers sometimes aren't quite as good at, in my experience, is the look, wave off, pull, look. Because they're used to having four people in the sky. It's no big shakes, is it? Because you all know you're going different ways. When there's 20, 30, 50, 80, 100 people, there's more people. And you go a cursory glance. Yeah, I've sort of got those two guys. Oh, shit, I forgot about, I forgot about the bloke who's 200 feet behind me and about 100 feet behind, horizontally behind me. If you don't give it a big wave off, how does that guy up there know you're going to pull? Yeah, well, yeah, this is good. Yeah, and you can open up into it. So, as the skydive gets bigger, you might be a four-way ninja. You need to think about some of the other things that may be out there that might might try and hurt you. Campy awareness, stability, this wide eyes thing again. Be predictable. Um, 
observe the pattern in the landing direc direction. Uh, often on four-way jumpers, you're great at landing. You fly downwind, you do a 180 and you land. Well, there's only four of you. Once you've got 80 in the sky, doing a 180 and landing isn't acceptable. I've been on skydives where people spiralling, for example, under canopy are axed. And America's a long way to go to to get axed on the first jump because you haven't listened and you think, well, I'll just spiral, it'll be fine. Different ball game when there's 80 in the sky versus perhaps four. So let's have a look at something else that might be fun. Oh, Mr. Sun, Sun, Mr. Golden Sun, please shine down on me. Oh, Mr. Sun, Sun, Mr. Golden Sun, hiding behind the tree. These little children are asking you. Please come out so we can play with you. Oh, Mr. Sun, Sun, Mr. Golden Sun, please shine down on, please shine down on, please shine down on me. Boy, you get me so high, buzzing like a beehive. Just a little kiss, but when it hits my lips, I'm sipping on sunshine. Boy, you're looking so fly, hotter than July. I just wanna stay forever and a day, sipping on sunshine. Down at the beach, you're holding my hand. Got an umbrella stuck in the sand. Watching the waves crash into the shore. Baby, I want some more. Blowing my mind You got me off on cloud nine Just a little taste I wouldn't want to waste A sip of that sunshine Oh, We can kick it all night Underneath the moonlight But when the party ends We'll do it all again Sipping on sunshine Down at the beach You're holding my hand Got an umbrella stuck in the sand Watching the waves crash into the shore being I've shown you that is that this sort of skydiving is fun and for me yeah you need the skills you need all the rest of it but to go away and do that that is what this skydiving is about and I don't do a four-way and I, I'm very competitive and I really would love to but I don't but for me 
this is what it's all about. Let's touch quickly on safety. This is in the safety seminar. Uh, you do in a four-way, you can get your gear on, you can do your checks, you can go on dirt dog and be on the plane within a minute. Yeah, if there's 20, 30, 40, 50 people, it takes a bit longer. So you need to allow a bit more time to make sure that you do have time for the checks and you do do them properly. When you load the aeroplane, there's 22 of you on the otter and you're all getting out. You do need to load it in the right order. So in the reverse order that you're going to jump out. You have not got time or space to get shoveling past people and whatever. And you will see people who they've got on the back, oh, I'm a, I'm a floater, how did that work? Um, when the red light comes on, Everybody wants to get up and everybody wants to move towards the door. There are more chances of handles, pins being dislodged. Take a bit more care. Be aware. Uh, we talked a little about uh, formation, approaching a formation and going low. If you're going to go low, you're going to get up. But if you are going to go, it is never beneath the formation. It's never below the base. You might funnel an 8 to a once. If you funnel it twice, your days of 8 to a's are done. Yeah? You do not go underneath the formation. We talked about tracking and opening. Uh, and we talked about the canopy ride. It's not over till you are back in the hangar. I have two injuries after I have landed. It's not over till you are back in the hangar. And I'll be honest, if you are blasé to safety, I don't want to jump with you. As the organiser or even part of the group. That's not what this is about. We are a potentially dangerous activity which we can do safely. Let's all make sure we do. Now, of course, when everybody's safe, everybody smiles. It took me at least five minutes to think about how I was going to get this shot into this presentation. <laughs> this formation, often copied, never bettered, in my opinion, but I may be biased. Terminology, let's look at a few shapes. Why is this important? Because if in your mind you understand the shape that you are trying to form, then you understand a chance of actually doing that in the sky. And people do get confused. I could show you a shot of a 36 way, and I have absolutely no idea what they are trying to do. All I know, there are 36 people hanging on to people in the sky. Now, my guess is, my guess is, it was the first time most people were doing a 36 way. Looking at that photo, all it said to me was, those guys were crap skydivers. They didn't know what they were trying to do. They didn't realise the shape. Now, when I looked after five minutes, I worked out, actually, it was all diamonds, or it should have been, but you just couldn't see it. So people in their head... They didn't know what they were trying to do. They think, oh, it's a blue grip there, and it's a... a is it black or grey? Yeah? In your mind, you need to understand the shape. And then you can see the bigger picture, and then you get better skydives. OK, a bit of audience participation. Uh, let's start from the top left. The people have looked like they've had Weetabix for breakfast. What's that, uh, what's that formation called? Stop, come on. Don't be shy, it's all right. In the middle one at the top, what's that? Spider. On the right... Bipole, bottom left, to the right, stair step. Very good, you've not done this before. Normally a bit more bold skydiving, I have to say. Uh, top left, what would you call those, those guys who've eaten the wheat a bit on the, on the back line? What would you call that? A loop. Loop, what about the middle one? Probably a line, isn't it? Yeah, okay. Uh, top right? Meow. Meow. Yeah, cat. Uh, let's bottom right. Bottom right. This always confuses people. What's that? Weetabix. Two people at the back on the, with the Weetabix. A zipper. Correct. What about the people next to them? Next one along to the left. Pod. Correct. What about the, the two single ones? The guy at the back. I'm going to go for a diamond wing. But I didn't create these. It was Rob that I would have dis dis displayed differently. But yeah. Okay. And on the bottom uh, left, there are two formations. First of all, this guy here, what's he? He's a stinger. And what do you call these lines that aren't joined? Whackers. Simple. I could have shown you another 30. And the thing is, as you get to the bigger ones, there's disagreement what they mean, which is really fun. But at least if we start to have a bit of an idea, we might in our head be able to see the bigger picture, which will make us all skydive better. Oh, and there, the, uh, and there they are. Name the tunnel. Abu Dhabi. I'll turn this off for a second because it's a bit dark. There is 
more room turning six to way in Abu Dhabi than there is turning four way at Bedford. We were doing 10 dives in 20 minutes. We were going in and before we went in, we were dirt diving five dives of four points. You fly for two minutes, the two minutes start when the last person gets in the tunnel. The two minutes stop, you exit the tunnel and you have 60 seconds before you start the next rotation. By the time you get to that fifth one of the series, it's the dive that you dirt dived 30 minutes ago and it's quite challenging for the brain. The point about wind tunnels is, in terms of formation skydiving, they are a perfect tool to hone your skills, your body position, your money, muscle memory. But more important than anything for me when it comes to FS is your slow fall. Whatever it costs, I would argue it's worth it so that you can slow fall. You must be able to, relative to the formation, go slower and be able to come back up. That skill will allow you to get on bigger and better skydives. Not having it will actually restrict you. I've got another 45 minutes of this, so perhaps we'll stop there. So, tunnel, vitally important. And you know what, when you're in the tunnel? You know when you're in the tunnel? It's just flying. All those letters, numbers, yeah, great. It's just flying. Simple stuff, good to know. We've all been there. You've signed up for an event. The forecast has been pants all week. You've come back home on a Friday night. You're tired, it's cold, it's wet, and the forecast tomorrow is a disaster. Ooh, ooh, that knee's hurting. Ooh, we're back to it. All been back. I've just sent an email. You're kidding nobody. You're kidding nobody. If you sign up to an event, turn up, just like the organiser. It's pants. I know we don't want to be there. If you want to invite us to the next one, where there is some good weather, then we all have to put in, don't we? Um, I can't put it more bluntly than that, can I? If you sign up, you turn up. It's the rules, and it will keep you getting on bigger and better skydives. I live eight miles from Langer. I got them and thought, well, this is crap. Oh, I better go up. And we jumped all day. It's the British weather. Uh, be on time. The dirt dives, the Geneva reefs, etc. Sometimes you're late. But if you are late, don't be last. Nobody remembers the person who's second to last. They remember the person who was last. Again, in Paris, I've seen people axed for that because they were late for a dirt dive. Okay, to be fair, we were beside the runway. We'd all stood in the sun for 10 minutes. And this guy just sort of runs up to the dirt dive when it's 100 degrees and we're baking hot. They were axed from the skydive because their attitude was wrong. Um, th this is why I'm wearing this. If you see the organiser wearing their jumpsuit, maybe I'll take mine. You've probably all been there. You get to the dirt dive. Okay, guys, uh, got your jumpsuit. Mine's in the hangar. Mine's in the car. And you waste another 10 minutes while people go and get the jumpsuit. And in your jumpsuit, if it's, that, if it's that drop zone, put your tickets in there. It just makes your life easier as well. The thing about formation skydiving or organised skydiving versus perhaps uh, teams is you are only as fast as the slowest person. And whilst you might only, one person gets it wrong on each, each of the steps, at the end of the day, you've missed the opportunity to do another skydive because every time there's been another five minutes while somebody just... Dirt dive. Try and focus on the dirt dive and not distract. Again, we've been there, the guy on your right hasn't got a scooby-doo what he's supposed to be doing, so you tell him, the guy the other tires tell him, he over there tells him, and the organiser's like lost. So it's easy for that person to say, hang on, I'm not quite sure, because it might be that his mirror on the other side of formation is also a bit confused. It will get you to the answer quicker. Um, try and see the big picture, as we talked about, and if you're unsure, just ask. If you're unsure, Nine times out of ten, there's somebody else wants some clarity as well. It's always easier to do it now than in the debrief afterwards when the skydiver didn't go as we planned. I'm really expect to land pack debrief. Landing, going to have a cup of coffee, having a chat, starting to pack, oh, there's the debrief, going to the debrief, then you go to the dirt dive and you're on a call and you find you haven't packed. Well, it was obvious, wasn't it? Land pack debrief. In the debriefs, uh, initially focus on your own performance. What did you do well? What are the things that maybe you could have done better? 
but look what other people are doing. Learn from them. Oh, actually, he came down. Look, I can see on the video. He came down. He stopped. He let that wave go through. And then he just picked up the grips. That was awesome. I'm going to do that next time. You can always learn from yourself and from what others do. And if you don't have a difference of opinion, and you think it's a big difference of opinion, it's often easier to take it out of the dirt dive and a one-to-one -one with the organiser afterwards. You'll probably get a better result. So what? What does that mean? Well, it means actually you stand, you stand more chance of getting on better skydives. And you are going to make that same decision yourself uh, very shortly. Watch the guy in orange. Watch the prop blast get him. This guy. <laughs> Flip! I'm trying to just turn this volume down a bit so I can talk over it without deafening you. So this is um, Botswana Boogie, some of you know I'm involved with. You'd hate this, you'd hate that running out the back of a hook. You get to go to a different part of the world, meet some whole different people you're not used to skydiving with. You get some awesome aircraft. Uh, there's two very awesome organisers in the room with us as well. Um, and Boogie's often about experiences over and above just the skydiving. As you can tell, I've done this before. I don't think that guy realised how lucky he was for being coached by a world champion. So you get the boogies, different sort of skydiving again. Um, maybe not so technical, depending on you get all sorts of levels. Oh, that's me being introduced to the president of Botswana, look, my famous hat. Um, and it gives the opportunity on some boogies to have far broader experiences than just skydiving. Now, I don't think there are any non skydiving partners in the room, but trust me, that gets you a free pass. You can go skydiving because your partner can come along and do some other stuff as well, which is always handy. Uh, after every jump at this boogie, the pilot makes a low pass. Why? Because he can. There's nobody telling me he can't. That's not, that's not landing, that is him doing a low pass at 60 feet. We're just going to watch a bit of this to, to try and uh, reinforce the point that more than just skydiving can go on. Uh, we are now sat in 4x4, uh, four four, oh no, we're on a boat there, but we're in 4x4 four four vehicles in the game reserve. And this isn't particularly zoomed in, this is as close as you see it. A striped donkey. There's these two lions, they came closer than me to that picture away from the vehicle that we were in. He's having his lunch at the water buffalo. This is a jackal, a cross between like an Alsatian and a, and a fox. Such a beautiful animal. To have a leopard that close is truly stunning and highly unusual, highly unusual. So, different sort of jumping again. Boogies are great fun. Often, uh, is all encompassing is more than just the skydiving. Great aircraft, maybe not the term that you get at a, at a more traditional boogie, but great fun. If anybody is interested in box one, obviously give me a shout out because I will bore you rigid about it, because it was a, a very good trip. So for me, the way FS works, almost globally I guess, um, is I see stepping stones, or I see a hierarchy, and we can debate what the order is, it doesn't really matter. So on the left you've got, well it sort of starts at walk up, and anybody can do that, and on the right we maybe could put world records. So on walk up, by name, everybody's going to get a slot, you're going to get there. Uh, you know, you probably need lower skills and lower experience, and for the first jump anyway, you're going to get on it. Obviously, if you haven't got the skills needed, you won't get on the second jump, but that's, that's the law of the jungle. Maybe load organising, and some people, people put those together, I know, but for me, load organising, a bit more structure, maybe you have to apply, there's a bit of a registration process, maybe you need a few more skills to get on it in the first place. 
we just looked at boogies. And the thing about boogies is you can jump with people, with literally thousands of jumps who are world-class jumpers who are happy to turn up, do a 4.20 way for a bit of a laugh out of hurt and have a beer with you in the evening. So boogies, you get a whole range of skills at jump. Maybe the race to jump, I'm thinking things like perhaps sequential games there. And that's those really, there, there is a bar of, of uh, skill and ability and you need to be at least at the bar or higher if you want to get on them. And then there's a, there's a misnomer, it's a myth, invitational. Very few people in the world get an invite to go on events. They get an invite or invitation to apply and then they get selected. But hey, and I'm talking there thinking things about maybe power play, so top end, high skills, relatively smaller. And th that's sort of different to saying that, well, if our world record's above that. My, I think my point is that records are very different and the skills needed are different. And I would argue maybe on a world record, your skills may be not as high as on invitational, but maybe your experience is greater by that, oh, I've actually seen you have the ability to track in a 15-way group, that sort of thing, yeah? Whereas you could be a, a, a four-way ninja, maybe, and more likely to get on some of the invitationals. There's this hierarchy, and, you know, like the natural progression is we want to move from the left to the right, and we all want to go further than we probably our ability allows us to today, but we want to keep moving to the right. So the question is, well, how do I get on better events, you know? Do I use the force, dark magic, buy a beer, do I need to sleep with the right people? Well, you're going to decide, not me, you're going to decide. So I want you to imagine it's your event, it's absolutely full, last minute a slot comes up and you've got two choices, skydiver one and skydiver two. So your first choice is somebody with lower skills and ability and low experience or somebody with higher skills and ability and higher experience. Who wants to vote for skydiver one? Who wants to vote for Skydiver 2? You're allowed to put your hands up. I won't chuck you out. You'll be all right. I won't pick on you. Oh, okay. what's the prize? So, so, you've just answered your own question. So what do I need to do? You need to develop your skills and you need to broaden your experience. You need to jump at different drop zones. You need to jump different aircraft. You need to see how different, different drop zones manifest, how they, how they organise loading, how they, what their exit order is, all those things that go around, that go around being in a different place. And you also need to jump with different organisers. Different organisers use different words to explain the same thing. And sometimes that difference of how it's said, you go, oh yeah, oh yeah, I get that. Talking personally, I've been told 10 times to do something. I think I understand. Somebody else tells me, well, it's bloody obvious. Why didn't I get that? So you need to get out there. Uh, second question. You've got an event, you've got one slot, last minute. Option one, you know what they are good at and you know what they're not quite so good at. You know they've got a dodgy elbow, a dodgy shoulder and front float isn't their thing. Or they're just a name on a piece of paper. Who wants Skydiver 1? Who wants Skydiver 2? What a surprise. Being known will increase your chances of getting on the skydive. Well, I applied and they didn't pick me. Well, they don't know who you are. Are you good or are you not? Yeah, not everybody's good at everything. I didn't need that one person to be front float. There were 22 other people who could have done the front float slot. Yeah. So sometimes not being good at something isn't the end of the world, but being known to an organiser or the event does help. So how do you get known? You go on boogies, you go on events, you go to different drop zones, you go to the tunnel, you mix with people, you see people fly, they see you fly. And you need to challenge yourself. You need to push yourself out of your comfort zone. Now that's a bit ironic com considering we are all skydivers in the room. For most people, we already are in the stratosphere of the comfort env envelope for them. But some people, they go, oh well, I can't go to that event because I don't know anybody. Uh, a few years ago, I went to the Ukraine when the Ukraine first kicked off doing, doing organised events. I was the only Brit there. Why did I go? They got an Antonov 72, it's a jet, it's a tailgate. Well, that sounds fun, I think I'll go to that. You might get to an event, you don't know anybody. I'll guarantee when you come back, you'll know a load more. It's about going out there, it's about picking the right events, and it is about pushing yourself uh, outside of it. Last question. Your event, one slot comes up. Two skydivers, equal ability, equal experience. One guy, late for everything, lacks concentration, disrupts the debrief. Option two, 
always on time, focus on the dirt dive, constructor in debrief. Who wants option one? Who wants option two? Oh, what a surprise. What a surprise. So you have to make selecting you an easy decision. Sitting there saying, oh, well, they didn't pick me. Well, you've got to get off your arse and you've got to do something. You might be the boogie and, well, I, want, I, I should be in that group over there because that group's better and I'm in this group and I should be in that group. Yeah, okay. That's life, it sometimes happens. I'm the best guy on the field. Well, great, you are. Prove it. Demonstrate it. Get to the formation first. Hold your slot a second longer you need to before you take the dip. Track like a ninja across three counters. And when that group up there comes, the old guys, yeah, I've got someone, I need to move them down. Who have you got? Yeah, they're great. You can have them. Yeah? But it's up to you. If you're not known, those, those things will happen. Um, so, all the things I said, different drop zones, tunnels, blah, 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 blah. Quick story. Have I got time? What's the time? Oh, I haven't really got time. No, we'll move on. I'll bore that story with the bar later. Let's try and wrap all that up, because I'm running out of time. Everybody in this room is capable of getting on the events you've seen so far and the one you're about to see. But you have to actively plan to do it. It won't come to you. You need to target your events. You need to target your org organisers. You need to plan where you accumulate your skills, your knowledge, and how you're going to gain experience. Four is great, but it's not essential to participate in this arena. You do need to get known. You need to be consistent, and you need to be safe. And actually, all of those things are damn so easy when you're, when you're enjoying yourself and having fun. And remember... It's just skydiving. We're going to finish on one of my favourite jumps. If we've got time, we'll take any questions, but I will fill it, finish it at, uh, on time. Um, I hope you found the last 30 minutes interesting. I hope you found it useful. If you did, my name's Jim Bradwell, and if you didn't, it's John LeBonk. <laughs>
together in one chair
misty eye of the mountain below. Keep careful watch of my brother's soul. And should the sky be filled with fire and smoke, keep watching over Jerome's home. This is the end and goodbye And we shall all burn together Watch the flames fly high Into the night Calling out Father Soon by then we will Watch the flames burn all along The mountain side The flames burn all the more The mountain side Desolation comes upon the sky Now I see fire Inside the mountain I see fire So the rain will wash these tears 
Where the lines don't move and the colors don't fade Leave it too empty and let the night fade When the world goes shallow and the world gone mad If there is a truth and it's on our side Watching John LeBlanc's lecture because he is always very good. Now, technically, I have to finish at 10 to and we are bob on time. So, I do apologise for A, you not getting the bar and not having time for questions. Uh, obviously, you all know me or you may know, now know me. If you want to ask me anything about today, that's great. If you wanted to know about Botswana, that's great as well. But thank you very much. I appreciate you being here.